Well, hey everyone, God bless you. It's Fred Kropp coming to you from the Healing Rooms Apostolic Center here in Santa Maria, California. And today I'm going to talk to you about one of the greatest secrets to overcoming or becoming an overcomer. How many of you say, you know, yeah, um, man, I know I see in the Bible that I'm supposed to be an overcomer, but, you know, the more I try, the harder it gets, right? Or the more I try, the more I fail. Well, you know what? That's right. We're going to fail because we cannot be an overcomer in our own strength and power. It takes something that God has provided to us, to us through Jesus Christ, through his death and resurrection. You know what that thing is? It's called grace. That's right. Grace. Most people look at grace and they think it's uh, grace is a cover up for sin or grace is something that you know, when I when I mess up, the, then the grace of God just <clears throat> comes, you know, there to cover up my mess up, right? But actually, grace is the ability to be an overcomer. Let me just read a scripture here with you. In fact, I'll read a couple of scriptures here in just a moment. But let me read a scripture to you. It says this in Romans 5, 17, the Apostle Paul writes, and he says, Through one man's offense, death reigned through the one. Much more, those who receive the abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness will reign in life through the one, Jesus Christ. Now, did you hear what he just said? He says, those who receive what? <clears throat> the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness will reign in life. Let's pray and let's ask the Holy Spirit to speak to us through what I'm going to share with you today. And again, I, I just believe God's going to do something amazing in your life as I share this day, during this uh, session. So Father, I thank you once again for your amazing grace. Well, we know the song, Amazing Grace, How Sweet the Sound, Saved a Wretch, a wretch Like Me. <clears throat> I once was lost, but now I'm found, but was blind, but now I see. Lord, help us to see that grace is more than just something that saves us. It's something that keeps us. It's something that helps us. It's something that strengthens us. It's something, something that gives us the ability to live an overcoming life. So, Lord, we invite you. We invite you, Holy Spirit, to speak to us. Help me to articulate this clearly to those that are watching this video. I just want to pray and ask a blessing on everyone that watches this video, that you will give them help and strength and grace, as Paul said, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray that in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, before I go on and talk to you about this secret weapon that we have that causes us to become an overcomer, let me just mention to you that coming up on July 23rd, that's Saturday, July 23rd, here at the Healing Rooms in Santa Maria, we're going to have a seminar called Activate. It's a half-day seminar open to everyone who would like to come. And in that seminar, you're going to learn about the greater one who lives in you. You're going to learn about how to love people that you encounter every day and how to know who you are in Christ. And it's going to bring a dramatic change in your life. So that's on Saturday from 9 to 2 p.m. July 23rd. Make sure you click the link in the chat or if you're watching on YouTube, click the link down below and you can sign up for the seminar. There's a lot of things that you're going to receive in that seminar. All right, so we're talking about grace, the secret to living the overcoming life. You know, the Apostle Paul in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, he writes about a struggle that he's having. He says, you know what? There was given me this thorn in the flesh. He said, I have this thorn in the flesh, and I prayed about it three times. It didn't go away. <clears throat> I didn't know what to do. And he says, then God said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. And so here, Paul is trying to overcome, and God says, and, and not just trying to overcome, he's, well, he's trying to overcome, but not overcoming, and then he says, you know, I prayed about this, that God would just take it away. And a lot of times in life, we are praying, no, just take this thing away. But God says, no, I'm going to give you my grace. And my grace is going to become, make your weakness powerful. Come on. He says, so I'll boast in my weaknesses that the power of Christ may rest upon me. So in this 
phrase here that he's saying, he says, he's talking about that grace is the power of God working in our life to overcome. So he overcame his thorn in the flesh by, not by his own strength or his own ability, not by might, not by power, but by the Spirit of God and by the grace of God. Do you know that grace is mentioned in the Bible 170 times? That's right. Grace is everything to us. Grace is is what sets Christianity apart from all other religions. All other religions are based on works, where their followers hopeful, you know, are trying to gain some kind of approval with God or some kind of state of spirituality. But grace or Christianity is based on the work of the cross, what Jesus did to pay for us. And he paid for us so that he might give us grace so that we might have life and life more abundantly. I like that phrase, life and life more abundantly. How, who wouldn't want to live life and life more abundantly? Well, you can, but you have. it's not going to be by your own ability. It's not by your own smarts or your own trying harder. It's going to be by the grace of God. So Paul discovers that he says, you know what? And in fact, he, after this, he goes on to talk about it over and over. He says, it says, he says, um, he says, I am who I am by the grace of God. I worked harder than them all, yet it was not I, but the grace of God that was working mightily in, in me. So he learns this lesson here in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, where he discovers that it's God's grace that empowers him. And that was 2 Corinthians chapter 12, by the way, and that God's grace will empower him to be or to live that overcoming life. And I'm sure that no one that's watching this video, you're sitting out there saying, I want to live a defeated Christian life. No, God never destined you. And you can go back to my last session where I talk about that you've been destined to reign in life. I would encourage you to watch it. I'll put a link for it there in the chat. Well, first off, we got to define what is grace. And so I'm going to just give you a few different things that define what grace is. I, number one, grace is God's, you know, you've heard this before, God's unmerited favor. God, it means that God's giving us something we didn't earn or we don't deserve. I, that's what salvation is. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9, Paul writes and says, for by grace you have been saved through faith, that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. So we don't get saved or become right with God by our works, we become right with God by the grace of God that we receive through faith. So by grace you have been saved through faith. It's not of yourselves, not based on works, but it's based on God's gift through Jesus Christ, which is given to us. And so grace is unmerited favor. Another thing, number two, grace is God's mercy extended to us. In Ephesians 2, verses 4 and 5, it says, But God, who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive to, with Christ, for by grace you have been saved. So grace is a product of the mercy of God. It's God having mercy on us. It's, it's not on, based on us, again, earning or deserving it, but God's mercy. Praise God for God's mercy, right? And, uh, and so uh, as you receive the mercy of God, that is the grace of God. God's mercy is his grace. The third thing that grace is, is grace is God's transforming power, making us new creations. Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 10, uh, verse 10, he says, By the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me was not in vain, but I labored more abundantly than they all, but not I, but was the grace of God that was with me. And so we are transformed into a new image, into the new creation, into a new image in Christ through the grace of God. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, Therefore, if anyone's in Christ, they are a new creation. Old things have passed away and all things have become new. So grace is what transforms us. You know, a lot of people get caught up into they, they receive Christ by faith, by the grace of God, and then they immediately go into works to try to become an overcomer or try to fulfill the will of God. You can't do it. You will fail 
every single time. It's not until you realize that I need the grace of God to live this Christian life. And I need to recognize that through the grace of God, I have become a new creation, a new person in Christ. And I'll never forget when I first met Jesus, I didn't understand all the things that I'm sharing with you right now. But my life was so transformed that people that knew me before just they they couldn't believe it. They couldn't they couldn't understand how could you be so different? It's because the grace of God was transforming my life. So the grace of God is makes is gives us the power to be the new creations that we are in Christ Jesus. Now here's my favorite definition of grace, and grace is the desire the power and the ability to do God's will. Grace is the desire, the power, and the ability to do God's will. Uh, Paul says this in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 7. He says, he says, I became a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given to me by the effective working of his power. So here's what I believe. I believe that it, as we really lean into God's grace, as we depend upon God's grace, as we allow God's grace to strengthen us, it, God's grace is what gives us the desire to do the things of God. It gives us the power to do the things of God, and it even helps our will to be willing to do the grace of God. It's the desire, the ability, or the power, and the will to do God's will. So here we go. If you want to do God's will, if you want to to accomplish everything you're going to accomplish. See, God's designed you to accomplish certain works in your lifetime. You weren't just created just to coast through life and one day you'll go to heaven. I, I received Jesus. I've been forgiven of my sins and then I just live my life out and, and then pretty much at the end I die and then I go to heaven. That's not it. God has a destiny for you. The Bible tells us that you are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works that God prepared beforehand that you should walk in them. So that means that God created certain things for you to accomplish in your lifetime, certain works that he does through you. And we do those works, we, uh, the only way we can do those works is by his grace. We can't do them in our own strength and power. The Bible says that God is not impressed with the strength of a horse or the legs of a man. In other words, God's not impressed with us trying to do things for him. You know, people say, well, I'm just going to do something for God. Well, it's very, it's pretty much impossible for you to do something with God that really accomplishes accomplishes something eternal other than to yield to God uh, and yield your body over to him to present your body to him so that he can do his work in you. The Bible says God is at work in you, both the will and to work for his good pleasure. That's Philippians chapter 2, verse 13. So here, I'm what is grace? Grace is the desire, it's the power, and the ability to do the will of God. Those of you that are jumping right now, on right now, either on Facebook or on YouTube, I'm talking about grace is the secret to living the overcoming life. And so I'm defining grace. Again, if you are just jumping on right now, make sure you go to my YouTube channel. When you get there, click on subscribe, click on the bell, and click like, and uh, and you can subscribe so you can get into this whole series called Overcomers. God has called us and designed us to be overcomers. And how do we overcome? We overcome by the grace of God. All right. So grace is the desire, the power, and the ability to do God's will. Here's another way to look at it. Grace is God's sufficiency working through our weakness. So remember I said about Paul, Paul's trying to overcome this thorn in the flesh. He comes to the conclusion that he can't do it. Now he's praying. God says he prayed three times. God, remove this. And God says to him, my grace is sufficient for you. This is 2 Corinthians 12, 9 again. My grace is sufficient for you for my power or my strength is made perfect in your weakness. Therefore, he says, I'll boast in my weaknesses that the power of God might be in me. In 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 5 and 6, Paul says, we're not sufficient or, you know, adequate in ourselves 
as to think of anything as coming from ourselves, but our adequacy, our sufficiency <clears throat> is from God who made us sufficient as ministers of the new covenant, not of the letter, but of the spirit for the letter kills, but the spirit gives life. So he's saying that my ability is coming out of my weakness. Now, how many of you say, you know, I, I have weaknesses. Maybe there's some areas that you like, I, I feel like I'm more than a conqueror, but maybe there's other areas of your life you just say, like, I just, every time I try, it just, I just fail. I just, it, I just, I try to overcome this sin over and over again. I can't do it. You know why? Because you're trying to do it in your own strength and power, and you're not recognized. You got to acknowledge your weakness to God. You got to acknowledge, I can't do this. Apart, Jesus said it this way in John 15. He said, I'm the vine, you're the branches. Apart from me, he said, you can do nothing. Now, nothing means nothing. That means we can't do anything. That if we're going to do something for God that's going to last for eternity, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be because God is at work in us, both the will and to work for his good pleasure. One more part of the definition of grace is God's Grace is God's supernatural gifting working through our lives. In Romans chapter 12, verse 6, Paul writes, he says, having then gifts, he's talking about, he's writing to believers, he says, having then gifts according to the grace that is given to us, let us use them. And then he lists out several gifts. So he says, having gifts, how, how do we get those gifts? According to the grace that is given to us. So by the way, that's a whole other message, and that is, that you need to stay in your place of grace. God gives you grace to have certain gifting in your life. When you try to function outside of that, it becomes hard. It becomes difficult. You, it, you, you are not going to be effective. But when you find what I call the grace place, the gifting that God has put in you, and you stay in your lane, you stay in that place, you're going to find it's easy. Grace makes things easy. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 7, it says, but to each one of us, Grace was given according to the measure of Christ's gift. And then in Ephesians chapter 3, Paul writes and says, I became a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given to me by the effective working of his power. And so grace is God's supernatural gifting working in our lives. Well, what are some of the benefits of grace? Well, I'll just list a couple of them here. Obviously, we're saved by grace. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, by, for by grace you've been saved through faith. We're justified by, by before God, just as if we have never sinned by grace. It says in Romans 3, 24, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. So you've been justified not by your own works, not by your own righteousness, our own righteousness is filthy rags before God. That's why we need the grace of God. We've been justified freely by his grace. Uh, another thing is that we have favor on our lives by God's grace. Here in this uh, Acts chapter 2, verse 46 and through 47, it talks about the new believers uh, that were saved on the day of Pentecost. It says they continued daily in the temple and were breaking bread from house to house. And they, it says they ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart, then it says this, praising God and having favor with all the people. They had favor with all the people. The word favor there is actually the word grace. It's the word, in the Greek, it's the word charis. And it means to have favor. And so grace, if you want to have God's favor on your life, then you need to function or have God's grace on your life, okay? And I'm going to tell you in just a moment how you can get God's grace on your life. But when you have grace on your life, it brings favor on your life. Another benefit of grace is that we reign in life through grace. That was our theme from the last session. If you, again, I want to encourage you to go back to the last video and watch the one on that is God's plan for our life to reign in life. But here in Romans 5, 17, it says, for by one man's offense, talking about Adam, Adam's sin, it says, death reigned through one. Much more, those who receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness will reign in life through the one Jesus Christ. So if you want to reign in life, it's by grace. 
Number five, here's the fifth thing, and that is we overcome sin by grace. So if you're struggling against sin, let me just tell you, the harder you try, the worse it's going to get. That's what the Apostle Paul writes about in Romans chapter 7, where he says, the thing that I don't want to do, I do, and the thing I do want to do, I don't do. Woe is me, O wretched man that I am. Well, who's going to deliver me? Well, it's because he, you can't overcome sin by your own strength and power. Romans 6.14 says, this, for sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under law, but under grace. So grace gives us the ability to overcome sin. In Romans chapter 5, it says this. This is moreover, the, moreover, Paul writes, the law entered that the offense would abound. But where sin abounded, grace abounded much more. I think, I think in the Greek it means grace superabounded. So that even as sin reigned in deaths, even so grace might reign through righteousness to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So if you want to overcome sin, it's going to happen because you know how to receive the grace to be an overcomer, right? So another thing that happens to us for grace, and that is we receive strength from grace. And, uh, and Paul or the writer of Hebrews actually writes, and he says, it's good for the heart to be strengthened by grace. And so if you want to be strong, grace is what makes you strong. Acts 20, verse 32, it says, Paul writes, he says, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up. So grace builds us up. And, and by the way, grace is not a thing. Grace is a person. His name is Jesus. That's right. And so Jesus and grace are one. We'll see that in just a moment here. Another thing that we receive by grace is we accomplish God's work by grace. 2 Corinthians 3, 9, verse 8, uh, chapter 9, uh, verse 8 says this, and God is able to make all grace abound to you that you will always having all sufficiency in all things will have an abundance for every good work. Now, in the context, he's talking about giving and, and sowing and reaping and so on. But here, here he's in, in the midst of that, he throws out this thing. God's grace will cause you, uh, it, to, it cause you to have sufficiency in all things and have an abundance for every good work. So we accomplish God's work by grace. How many of you want to accomplish God's work? Put an amen in the chat there. Say, thank you, Jesus. Come on. Again, those of you who are joining me, I'm talking about grace is the secret to living the overcoming life. Well, now we come to the place where we want to find out, well, where did grace come from, right? I think you've already kind of figured it out. But where did grace come from? Well, grace comes, came into the earth, or grace comes to us through Jesus Christ. In John, the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verse 17, it says, For the law was given through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Praise God. And so when Jesus came, grace came into the world. Grace is a person. Grace is a, is, it becomes a substance in you, the substance of Jesus working in your life. Uh, it, the Bible says Christ in us is the hope of glory or hope of experiencing the glory of God. So the law was given through Moses, but grace and truth came through the Lord Jesus Christ. In uh, 1 Corinthians 1, 4, it says, I thank my God always concerning for you, Paul says, for the grace of God which was given to you by Christ Jesus, by Christ Jesus. So we were, Jesus is the one who gives us grace. In Paul writes to Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1, he says, be strong. He says, therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Now, notice he didn't tell him to be strong in himself, to be strong in his own ability. You just need to get it together, Timothy. You know, you just, you seem to be having these stomach problems all the time. Uh, you know, no whining, no complaining. He didn't tell him just to, you know, get it together and all that. He said, you know what, Timothy? For you to be strong, you need to be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. So grace comes to us through Jesus Christ. So now that leads me to asking a another question, and that is, how do I receive God's grace? Maybe you're asking that question right now. Well, that's great, uh, Fred. I, I, I hear you. I realize 
that if I'm going to be an overcomer, I got to have the grace of God. So how do I receive or how do I get the grace of God? Well, I'm glad you asked that question. So let me just give you a couple of things that will help you to know how to receive grace, okay? By the way, you receive grace. It's something that you don't work for. You don't try to earn it. You receive it to yourself. Well, I would say uh, one of the things you must do is you must come to a place of admitting your weakness. Paul said, I'll boast in my weaknesses that the grace of God might be with me. See, great, you, you receive grace when you come to the end of yourself, when you come to the realization, I can't overcome this addiction, I can't overcome this sin, I can't overcome this problem, I can't overcome this attitude, I can't overcome this struggle that I'm in, I can't overcome, I, I cannot do this. That's right. You need to come to that place where you come to God in utter weakness. Lord, apart from you, I can't do anything. But with God, the Bible says, all things are possible. So why, you know, and, and that's, you know, what I tell people is that grace is offensive. One of the reasons that grace is offensive is that you can't take any credit for it. You see, when grace is working in you, all the glory goes to Jesus. All the glory goes to God. You can't say, you know, I just tried harder. I just, I just disciplined myself, and and that's how I became an overcomer is by my discipline in my life, and I. You know, I just worked out my spiritual muscles and I became strong and all this. No, no, no. It's all by grace. Paul says, I am who I am by the grace of God. And he said, I worked harder than them all, but it, but it was not I, but it was the grace of God working in me. So who's he giving the credit to? He's saying, I didn't do this by my own ability. He said, I did it by the ability of God's grace working in my life. So how do we receive God's grace? First off, we got to realize and recognize and admit we can't do it. Lord, I can't overcome. I can't defeat this problem. I can't defeat this situation. I can't, you know, prevail in this situation. I've got, you've got to do it in me. I need your grace. So that would be number one. Number two, humble yourself. In 1 Peter 5, 5, Peter writes to younger people, he says, likewise, you younger people, submit yourself to your elders. Yes, all of you be submissive to one another. Be clothed with humility, for God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Now, it's interesting that he writes to younger people. You know why? Because when we're young, we think we got it all together. When we're young, we think we can do it in our own strength and power. And notice that God wanted to do a great thing through, you know, deliver the people of Israel through Moses. But I want you to notice when he was younger, when he was 40 years old, he went out to try to deliver the people of Israel in his own strength and power, and he killed an Egyptian, and then it was made known, and then he fled to the backside of the desert for 40 years till he was 80 years old. And when God appeared to him in the burning bush, and God says, you know, Moses, I want you to deliver the people of Israel. Moses didn't say, yeah, I can do it. I, I, I've got the strength. He said, you know, he says, you're choosing the wrong guy. I have no ability. So in other words, Moses humbled himself. He became to the place of weakness so that he could receive now the power of God working in and through his life. James writes and says this. He says, God gives more grace. It says he, therefore it says, God resists the proud. What is pride? Pride is self-dependence. Pride is not acting proud or being boastful, although those are manifestations of pride. Pride is self-dependence. It's dependence on yourself apart from God. But God gives grace to the humble. What is humility? Humility is those that are fully dependent on God and on his ability working in their life. So if you're going to have God's grace, number one, you got to admit your weakness, admit that you can't do it. Number two, you got to humble yourself by acknowledging that apart from God, you can't do anything. And then the third thing you got to do to get grace is you got to receive it by faith. Romans chapter five, verse two, Paul writes and says this, we have access by faith into this grace in which we stand. We have access by faith in to this grace in which we stand. So we receive grace by faith. That's right. 
So we believe God. We believe that there's grace is, you know, my grace is sufficient for you for my power is perfected in your weakness. So we receive it by faith. Lord, I believe that you have, you want to give me the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness so that I can reign in life. So I believe that and I receive by faith grace in my life to be an overcomer. The, the fourth thing that you do to receive grace is you got to go come boldly to the throne of grace. So grace is available. So yes, I, I receive it by faith, but where do I go to get it? Well, in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16, it, said, it says this, let us therefore come boldly or confidently to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Now, this is a part of our prayer life. You, need, you and I need grace every day. That's why every day I want to go to the throne of grace to get the grace I need for today. I need grace today to, to do the things that God has for me or the plans that God has for me, the works that he wants me to do, uh, to, to be the kind of husband I need to be, the father I need to be, you know, the minister I need to be, uh, the friend I need to be. I need God's grace. I can't do this apart from God Apart from Jesus, I can do nothing. So I hope that was helpful to you. Let me just uh, end this session by just giving you uh, the, the last few things that I just shared. The way you receive grace is you've got to admit that you can't, that you need it. You cannot do it in your own strength and power. You admit your weakness. Secondly, you humble yourself before God, acknowledging your total dependence upon Him and upon His grace. You receive it by faith, and you receive it by coming to the throne of grace. So I want to pray for you right now. But before I pray for you, let me just one more time just share with you, coming up on Saturday, July 23rd, we're doing a half-day seminar at the Healing Rooms in Santa Maria. It's called Activate, where we're going to help you. And in that session, you're going to activate the greater one that lives in you. You're going to activate your identity in Christ and you're going to activate your love for people that you encounter every day. In that seminar, you're going to get a lunch, you're going to get a workbook, and you're going to get a copy of my book, One Simple Act of Obedience, along with the sessions that we're going to give you training and activation. So make sure you click, I'll put a uh, a, a thing in the chat there where you can click and sign up for the seminar or if you're watching on YouTube, click the link below. If you live anywhere near Santa Maria, I want to invite you to come again Saturday, July 23rd. Let me pray for you in closing here that God's grace will be upon you. Paul begins almost all of his letters with grace to you and he ends his letters with grace to you. It wasn't just a greeting like, hey, how are you? He was saying, I'm praying for grace to come on your life. So I'm gonna pray for grace to come on you right now for this week for you to be an overcomer. Father, I pray for everyone that's watching this video right now in the name of Jesus. And I thank you that we I come to the throne of grace on their behalf to receive grace. Your word says mercy and grace to help in time of need. Give them grace to overcome whatever they're, giant they're facing in their life, grace to overcome whatever situation they're having a struggle in, if it's a sin, if it's an addiction, if it's just depression, whatever it would be, I pray for grace to come, and I believe you for miraculous turnarounds and miraculous deliverance and freedom and healing and, and blessing to come upon their life by the grace of God. I pray that in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Can you say amen to that? All right, my brothers and sisters, well, God bless you. Again, this is Fred Croft coming to you from the Healing Rooms Apostolic Center here in Santa Maria, California. And I want you to know that the Father loves you, Jesus loves you, and I love you. Be blessed, my brothers and sisters.